Hi, this is Andy from Aerostitch, and today we're going to talk a little about summer riding and how to manage the heat, particularly in a one-piece armored coverall. Uh, we get a lot of questions about this, and uh, I want to give you a little bit of background. The suit is designed to go on and off over street clothes very fast and very easily. Um, and managing heat has partly to do with your motorcycle and what you're wearing underneath it. I want to introduce you to my friend, Flat Cameron. Flat Cameron is our mannequin stand that we made years ago. We've made about 10 of them uh, for use at our pop-up stores. And we had a coworker for a long time named Cameron and we needed a mannequin to display the suits and to be transportable to our pop-up locations. And Cameron seemed like about the right age and size, so we had him lie down on a piece of plywood and we traced around his body with a Sharpie pen and then we cut it out with a saber saw, painted it black, put it on a stand, and now flat camera. And I'm going to detail as best as I can some of the tactics that you use to stay cool in hot weather wearing one of these coveralls. A couple of things I mentioned before. It matters what you wear underneath and it also matters what kind of a bike you ride. I like going fast as much as anybody and I ride at 80 miles an hour but I really like unfaired or minimally fared bikes. When you're behind a luxury touring bike's fairing or windscreen, that's great. Enjoy the ride. But your strategies for keeping cool when you're not in a direct wind flow are a little different than when you are. And I'll talk about what you can do and what you can't do. At some point in your past, you may have seen a film or a video showing a parade ground full of soldiers in dress uniforms on a hot day somewhere, assembled to parade before the generals or whatever, and the video will go on and the marching band will play and the soldiers will be marching in companies and in other units, and we'll be, they'll be standing at attention and somebody will suddenly f pass out, faint, and drop down onto the parade ground. Uh, amidst all the others. Managing heat on a motorcycle is very important because that probably can happen to a rider if they're not careful. I will occasionally see a story somewhere about somebody who's crashed a motorcycle and died on a straight road in a place like Arizona or Texas and there no, there's no evidence of alcohol being used, and there's no evidence of how the, of the bike being damaged or having a flat or anything. But suddenly the guy is 50 feet off the side of the freeway or the two-lane road, and he's died. And, and I believe in those uh, examples, the, it's like the soldier on the parade ground. The guy didn't manage, or the rider, excuse me, did not manage the... Um, their hydration and their minerals correctly and they fainted and the bike went off the road and if they landed wrong they uh, were killed. The other thing that's sort of a preface to this is before the invention of air conditioning people used a couple of different technologies especially the people who lived in desert areas famously Arab peoples would wear long robes in hot, hot conditions, and the purpose of covering themselves up in hot desert conditions, for generations, for thousands of years, they dressed this way because you wanted to, to, for your health, to have a moist microclimate around your skin, and those robes help you have that to mitigate uh, body odors. They used. Um, uh, perfumes and things like that, but that's how they managed extreme heat and being outdoors, it's wearing robes. Uh, today's riders, if you're riding for a couple of hours on a hot day, you can wear a mess jacket just fine, but you lose a lot of moisture when you wear a mess jacket for long periods of time on super hot sunny conditions. And so we recommend sort of managing the airflow inside of the suit to, like in a desert dweller would wear a long robe to manage uh, to have a nice microclimate around your skin uh, inside of the suit. That's the way to be safe and to be comfortable and is best for your overall health. 
Uh, so you start with a base layer that absorb that I I, I like. Uh, we make a cotton riding short that's like gym shorts from before the synthetic revolution. It's absorbent. I like to have a sheepskin saddle pad so your bottom is not directly on the vinyl saddle, which blocks uh, moisture passing through the membrane, the breathable waterproof membrane. So a sheepskin saddle pad helps moisture come out of the bottom part of the suit through the membrane. Uh, cotton shorts help uh, spread moisture. Cotton t-shirt or polo shirt helps spread uh, moisture around and helps aid in evaporation. Those are the outside parameters uh, of dressing for uh, an all-day exposure at 90 degrees or 85 to 100 degrees. Managing uh, your cooling, if you have the right base layers uh, and it's 90 degrees or 100 degrees or even 85, uh, there are things you can do to make these suits work a lot better in hot weather. Again, starting with a good base layer of cotton shorts and a cotton polo or t-shirt or cotton button-down shirt even. Um, you can manage the airflow inside of the suits. You can use a wetted shirt or a wetted scarf around your neck. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, or you can put ice in the pockets if you stop at a, a gas stop and they have a soft drink machine that you press the tab for getting ice. You can fill the pockets with ice, and that's a pretty fun trick if you have the patience for it. I discovered this many, many years ago when we were first developing the suits. Um, there's uh, eight toll road stops northwest of Chicago, and when you go from Minnesota, where I live, to Chicago, as you get past the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, the Northwest Toll Road starts and there's eight toll stops and I was doing that regularly at that time and I stopped and I filled the pockets with ice. This was a year or two into the history of the Heritage Company and I found that I, my clothing underneath stayed dry and the melting ice, the liquefying ice, came out through the stitches and at the bottoms of the zippers in the pockets where I had packed the things and uh, the way the ice had been packed. And um, so I was dry and I was quite cool and it was 102 or whatever it was that first day, that first time I was, did it. And I remember pulling into a toll booth where there was five lanes or something. It was super noisy, super hot. The woman taking the toll, there's so much ambient noise there. I handed her my dollar or my toll card, I don't even remember what. And she looks at the gas tank of my bike behind the tank bag and around my crotch and on the suit. And there's sort of water just streaming out of the outside of the suit. And she yells to get my attention, hey, your bike is leaking something, thinking that there was a problem. And I yelled back at her, thanks, I have ice in the pockets. And she sort of rolled her eyes and went, oh, I wish I was you. Uh, and it's a lot of trouble to do ice in the pockets, but it is effective. The only other funny story I have from when I would did it is I was somewhere in the mountains and it was 100 degrees or 90 degrees and I knew that I had to go from here to over there and I packed the suit pockets with ice, took off from the gas stop and an hour later I was at 10,000 feet or some super high and it was like 45, 50 degrees. I had lost all this temperature and I was absolutely freezing because at the prairie or the plains it was hot and by the time I got up to the high passes it was cold and I still had some ice in my pockets. Feeling pretty stupid. But what I do nowadays, my go-to nowadays is I like to use one of the Aerostitch silk scarves. We have a couple different versions of this scarf. Uh, and, then, and I will go into the restroom of a gas station or convenience store with it like this, put it under the sink faucet and squish it around, fill it with water, kind of halfway wring it out. And I will leave the store with this sort of dripping mass of silk in my hands and go out to the motorcycle. And then I will take it like this. I'm already wearing the suit and I will put it around my neck wet like this. 
kind of pull it like this. And it's the moment you put it on, you, even if you, you put hot water in the thing to have it be, there's, there's kind of a shocking moment depending on whether you put hot water or cold water in it. But it, then I will sort of zip the suit up to about here so that this can't blow away. But that a lot of air will pass this way. My suit will be open a little bit in this area. And if the humidity is below about 80 percent, 70 percent, the passing airflow as I ride down a road will cause the water to evaporate and be very cold against my skin. On both sides of everyone's neck there's a big artery called the cartoid artery which carries blood to your brain or, and there's a similar vein. And when you apply heat or cold to areas of your body where there's a lot of blood vessels up right against the skin, if you put an ice cube right on your wrist here, or a wet silk scarf that's being evaporating very that's evaporating very quickly right here, your whole body will get cold. Your blood cells passing beneath your skin pick up the coolness from the evaporating water or from the ice cube and it moves the cool blood cells all around your body and your whole body is cool. Electric heated vests, jackets, liners, and bibs all work on that same principle. You don't have to do much except find a topical area where you want to heat or cool your body and that will make the whole rest of your body comfortable. So this, depending on the relative humidity and the speed, I, again I'm on an unfaired or minimally fared bike. This, if it's a dry day and it's 95 degrees, this wet scarf will get, uh, it'll dry out in 50 miles or 40 miles. And I wear one of our platypus water carrying bags on a piece of parachute cord, bandolier style. And there will be a link in this video to a video we made about this thing called a modern boda, which is a kind of a wineskin bag used in Spain. But I use the platypus bag, I fill it with water, I put it on over my helmet, it hangs by my side, and then when this starts to dry out, I'll reach around, I'll pop the lid off, and I'll sort of wet it again as many times as is necessary till the bike needs gas at the next stop. So this is my solution. We sell this scarf in two models, in two versions. We said both models are available in either black or white. This is the competition version. It's two layers thick. I don't use this version. I use the other version. And the reason I like the other version is it's a little bit longer. These do blow away if you're not careful of how you're, if you're not aware of how you're managing this and how the suit is wrapped up around it, you can have one of these blow off you like that. And you don't want to lose it on a hot day because it's a tool, it's a piece of equipment. So th this is a wonderful scarf. This is our competition version, which is two layers thick. Um, and works better than any kind of neck gaiter I've ever tried. So I encourage you to try it. The, this one's a little more expensive because it's two layers thick. I like the standard version, which is a little bit longer. Uh, works a little bit better for me, but they both work great, and some people like one and some people like the other. Again, the relative humidity has to be below 100 or, or below 100 or 90 percent to have some evaporation taking place. You also have to have ambient wind flowing around you as you move through the air. Um, but this is the go-to tool. You won't, you, it won't really wet your clothing that much. Just right in here where it touches your polo shirt or your t-shirt, it'll get a little bit wet, but on a hot day that dries instantly. The rest of you stay, stays dry and your circulatory system carries the cooled blood around your body, cooling your whole body. It's a very useful tool. They don't stay this white for very long though, uh, which is why you may want a black one. The one I use is white and looks like it's got a million miles on it because it does. Not literally a million miles, but a lot of miles and it's a pretty long and hard wearing fabric. Getting back to the suit, it's more desirable if you're going to be in an 80 or 90 degree weather all day to cover yourself up than to wear a mesh. Either way, when you stop to drink on a super hot day you're losing minerals too and you don't want to upset your mineral balance in your body, your electrolyte balance. So if you stop for gas, buy a bag of salty potato chips or something and eat something that has some minerals in it or some seasonings in it. 
if you're drinking a lot of water. This is particularly important if you're wearing a, a mesh garment. So getting back to the specifics of the suit, you're in the suit, you've got a cotton polo shirt, you've got cotton shorts underneath, you're sitting on a sheepskin, water can go, moisture can evaporate from your sweaty body, pass through the fabric. Uh, there is, um, on this suit, we have removable rare earth magnets, which hold the collar open this way. I basically don't use them. I tend to, on super hot days, to tuck the collar in like this and have the silk scarf be there. But these work just as well. They are removable. It's up to you. The collar is a too high collar, so I wear the collar down. Underneath the arms and in the back, we have essentially what are exhaust ports. This is a waterproof zipper with a covering flap with a long parachute coat on it. And you can operate it when there's not a wooden arm in it. While you're actually moving, if you're on a straight road and there's no traffic, you can move it up and down a few inches. Uh, if you know you're going to be in hot all day, you can leave it down the whole way. Uh, people have asked why there's no mesh in here for bugs, uh, bees, and stuff like that. It's because we tried a bunch of different kinds of mesh and they would sometimes get caught in the zipper and you don't really want that. What I'll do if I'm traveling is I'll, if I see uh, beekeepers, bee boxes along the side of the road, even one, I'll close up my collar and I'll close these up as I enter that bee area. And then I'll, and if I don't see any bee boxes, I'll leave them down. Um, and that's how I manage that. In the upper area, there's a air exhaust, which has two sliders under this flap. Some people open them fully like this. I don't do that. I like to put pin them together at the center, like this, and then air can exhaust sort of this way. Uh, some riders will ride with the side vents open. This part of the suit was mainly designed to help you get into your, your pants pockets. If you forgot your keys to your house or your bike keys in your jeans, after you put the suit on, you can get in and out of the suit through this. But some people open those. Um, and some people open the main zippers, which come up the inside of each leg. And then there's a snap at the bottom so you can hold the legs together. I've never felt comfortable doing that. And I'm wearing shorts underneath the suit. Anyhow. And I'm riding an air-cooled bike usually, and uh, it's just never been a big problem for me as long as I'm wearing cotton shorts and sitting on a sheepskin. As long as I have a wet silk scarf around my neck, my body is cool and comfortable up to very, very high temperatures. Probably made this more complicated than it actually needs to be. I've probably talked longer than I need to. Uh, I encourage you to try a wet silk scarf. It's a very, very useful tool. When you fold it up, they fit nicely inside of any of these pockets. Uh, if you want a drinking system in the suit, there's a platypus bag we sell that's the almost the exact size of this. I think it's a quarter or a quart and a half. And the hose from it goes out the bottom, and then the filler cap is in the top. And the hose is quite long. So you can buy this platypus thing, and instead of putting uh, ice in the pocket, and you stick it in here, and you run the hose up till it sticks out right here, and then you have a, a drinking bite valve system. Uh, the product number will be at the bottom of the screen with a, or a link to the particular platypus bag that fits in here and is useful as a bite valve drinking system. <sighs> what else? This, you put pockets, you put ice in here, you put ice in here, you can put ice in here, you can put ice in here. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to put all that ice in the thing when you can just go into the bathroom of a, a convenience store and wet a silk scarf, crepe it around your neck once you're out at your bike, and off you go, and within a half a mile, you're feeling cool. Thanks for watching this video about hot weather tactics and heat management, wearing one-piece coverall aerostitch suits. I um, hope you found some of the tricks and ideas useful, and if you have uh, time to travel this summer, we have a very nice uh, season here in Duluth 
for three or four days somewhere in July or August. We hope you get up here and we'd love to show you our factory where all this stuff is made right above us. Uh, thanks for watching and good riding. Thank you Flat Cameron for your help. <laughs>